There is this amazing thing that happens in the eastern forest of the United States just once in a long, long time. First, you see one insect, then another, then another, and before you know it, there are millions and millions of cute little critters with big red eyes. Billions, in fact. And the sound, oh, it's loud. My friends, you have just witnessed the emergence of a cicada brood. And it's been either 13 or 17 years since the last brood emerged. But enjoy it while you can, they won't be here for long. Hi everyone, my name is Gabriela Franco, and I am here to tell you all about the periodical cicadas. They are called periodical because they only emerge together after a period of 13 or 17 years. I am hoping that you will be just as excited as I am to greet them, to learn about them, and then to share what you know about them with your family and friends. Then you too will be a friend to cicadas. First, let's talk about the anatomy of cicadas. Cicadas are insects, and like all insects, they have six legs and three body regions, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. The head contains two large compound eyes, which have thousands of photoreceptors, three smaller simple eyes, a pair of small antenna, and a long tubular mouth. The thorax is the middle region where all six legs and both pairs of wings attach, and which contains all the muscles needed for flying and walking. And the last region to talk about is the abdomen, which contains many of the insect's organs, including those for digesting food and for reproduction, which they are very good at, as seen by the sheer numbers you will experience in real life when they emerge. You may see some cicadas that look strange. The ends of their abdomens are broken off and they're filled with like what looks like powder, but they can still fly around. This is because, although cicadas have no specialized predators, a particular fungus, Masospora cicadaina, has specialized as a parasite of periodical cicadas. The fungus grows inside their bodies, filling their abdomens with powdery spores. And even though most of the cicadas' abdomen may drop off, they can still fly around and spread the infection. Remember that their flight muscles are located in their thorax, which is not infected. Cicadas can infect one another through contact, helping the fungus to spread, and when the next generation comes up from the underground, 13 or 17 years from now, the spores will be waiting in the soil, ready to infect the new adults. Cicadas are related to many common insects you might see in your garden and schoolyards, like yellow aphids and gray stink bugs. Across the world, there are more than 2,000 different species of cicadas. How many of you can recognize this insect? Well, this green and black insect is a common cicada. Some adults are found every year. Because of that, they are called annual cicadas, and their loud calls are typically heard in wooded areas on hot summer days, giving them the common name of dog day cicadas. If you want to inspect cicadas, you can gently handle them. They cannot bite or sting you. If you pick one up, they might tickle your hands, they might buzz in alarm, but that won't hurt you either. Cicadas are clumsy, so they might bump into you, but that won't hurt you either. If you live in the eastern or midwestern areas of the United States, consider yourself very lucky, because periodical cicadas only live in these regions. Let's compare the periodical cicadas with the more common dog day cicadas that you may be more familiar with. First, you can see that they are different colors. Periodical cicadas are black and orange with bright red eyes, which is very different from the larger green and black dog day cicadas. The immature stages of periodical cicadas, which are called nymphs, require either 13 or 17 years of growth in order to complete developing, whereas the nymphs of the dog day cicadas develop more quickly, in 3 to 5 years. Periodical cicadas emerge all at once, synchronously and causing a big buzz in the spring, whereas dog day cicadas emerge asynchronously over a longer period of time and can be often heard throughout the summer. Finally, one of the biggest differences is that we only see periodical cicadas during the rare emergence years, when there are billions to be found. You may hear some people incorrectly referring to periodical cicadas as locusts, but locusts are actually a type of grasshopper that also can be found in huge swarms. Let me show you. You can see that the two insects look pretty different. 
cicadas are part of a group of insects known as true bugs, whose mouth parts are modified into a long tube, used for piercing and sucking liquid food from either plants or animals. Cicadas also have clear see-through wings, and they feed underground on the plant sap of trees. Locusts, on the other hand, are actually a type of grasshopper, with mouths that are designed for chewing the leaves and stems of plants. When locusts appear in large swarms, they can destroy the crops of farmers. But cicadas do not feed on crops, and so are not considered a pest. Like I said before, periodical cicadas only live in the eastern areas of the United States. This map shows the eastern half of the United States. Each color represents a brood of periodical cicadas. A brood is what we call a group of cicadas that emerges all at the same time. Now, I want to ask you a question. Which of these different habitats do you think might have cicadas? Well, cicadas are primarily found in forested areas and cannot live in grasslands or areas that have been converted to agriculture or in areas with a lot of concrete instead of soil like this parking lot. They can be found in some suburban areas where mature trees grow and have been planted. A way to encourage cicadas to move in is by planting trees in your neighborhood. In eastern North America, scientists have identified seven different species of periodical cicadas. There are three species that can occur in the 17-year broods and four species that can occur in the 13-year broods. Most broods contain more than one species and as many as four that co-occur and have the same emergence cycle. The seven species look very similar. They all have red eyes and black and orange bodies, but differ slightly in size and color pattern, especially on their abdomens. These three pictures show the abdomens of the three species of 17-year cicadas side by side. See if you can spot some of the differences. To tell the species apart, you will need to pick them up and turn them over to look at their abdomens, which is the last body segment. Cicadas tend to be found in patches, so different species and different numbers of cicadas might change from place to place. When you go outside, see if you can tell which species are in your neighborhood. Periodical cicadas have a very distinct life cycle. They have only three life stages, egg, nymph, and adult. Starting underground, the nymphs will emerge from soil, crawl up to the trunk of trees, and then molt into adult cicadas, which have wings. Although the nymphs lack wings, they look a lot like the adults. So the transition from the last nymphal stage to adult is called incomplete metamorphosis. Other insects, like butterflies or ladybugs, for example, have a life cycle with four stages. Egg, larva, which is the growing stage, pupa, and adult. This type of life cycle is called complete metamorphosis, since there is a dramatic, almost complete change between larva and adult that occurs during an extra stage. But have you ever heard these two insects singing to you all through spring? Yeah, I don't think so. After they molt into adults with wings, cicadas will fly up the trees where the males will begin to sing to attract females for mating. Once they have mated, the female cicadas will lay their eggs in small branches, completing their mission. By June, most of the adult cicadas will have died, and the big orchestra is almost over. However, hidden in the twigs, the eggs are developing, and by early August, they will begin to hatch, and millions and millions of tiny nymphs will drop into the ground and burrow into the soil where they will find a root to feed on. Now is when they get super cozy. They will stay underground for another 13 or 17 years, depending on the brood. But in either case, we won't see them again for a long, long, long time. But are they really gone? No, they're under our feet. Remember that each cicada nymph makes itself a little chamber in the soil and sucks sap from plant roots which is to say, you might find yourself playing or picnicking on top of their house. The nymphs molt four times, getting larger and larger, and they may move around to find a new root to feed on. During this whole time, they are alone in their chambers and don't interact with other cicadas, 
Finally, the fully grown nymph emerges from the soil and molts for the last time above ground into an adult, which has wings, and the cycle repeats. One of the most interesting things about periodical cicadas is their incredible long lifespan. If the whole circle is 17 years, you can see that for almost all of the 17 years that periodical cicadas are alive, they are in the nymph stage, underground and out of sight, slowly growing. The tiny slivers of blue and red indicate the amount of their life they spend as adults and eggs. We estimate that over 99% of their life is spent in the nymph stage. Cicadas are herbivores, which means that they eat plants. But instead of chewing on leaves, they drink plant sap. Their mouth is like a straw that pokes into and sucks up fluids from the underground roots of plants. Because the plant fluids that they feed on are mostly water and not very nutritious, cicadas depend on a special bacteria that lives inside their bodies to provide other nutrients they need to grow. These bacteria are so important that they are included in every egg that a mother cicada lays, so her children will get all the nutrition that they need. Cicadas do all of their feeding and growing underground. These fully grown nymphs are currently living about 8 to 12 inches below the soil surface. You can see that the nymphs have little wing buds. Their red eyes tell us that the cicadas are getting ready to come up above ground. For the past 12 or 16 years, they have had white eyes, and only in the last year before they emerge do the eyes turn bright red. Cicada nymphs will use their special front legs to dig a long tunnel to the soil surface. Some cicadas build a turret, a small chimney-like tower made of dried mud above the surface of the soil. When they emerge from the soil, they will climb a vertical surface, like a tree trunk or a fence, to find a place to molt and transform into an adult. Cicada nymphs will emerge on a warm spring night after the soil temperature on the ground reaches 18 Celsius, or 64 Fahrenheit. You will start to see the holes or turrets a couple of weeks before the cicadas emerge. Once the adult cicadas are out and above ground, they get down to the business of courtship and mating. One thing you'll notice right away is that cicadas are loud. The males produce a tremendous buzzing song to attract and impress female cicadas. They make the noise by vibrating timbals, which are a special rib membranes on their abdomens, three to four hundred times a second. A group of many males singing together is called a chorus. In our area, people schedule their weddings to avoid having to compete with the cicadas to be heard. If a female cicada hears a male that she likes, she will respond with a clicking noise, made by flicking her wings, to signal her interest, and the male will follow. Female cicadas mate only once, while males can mate many times. You may see a pair of cicadas mating and join at the abdomen. Once a male and a female cicadas have mated, usually at a chorus site, the female flies off and lays hundreds of eggs in the twigs of a tree to start the next generation. It's pretty easy to tell the difference between a male and a female by looking at the ends of their abdomens. Females have a pointy ovipositor, which is an egg-laying structure that may be poking out or may be tucked into a sheath. Males, in contrast, have a much blunter abdomen. After they have mated, female cicadas use their sharp ovipositors to saw slit into slender twigs or trees. They prefer twigs about the diameter of a pencil, and they insert about 20 eggs into each slit. Each female can make multiple slits, laying up to several hundred eggs. Leaves on those twigs may die. The eggs hatch about six weeks after they are laid, from the middle of July to early August. And tiny nymphs, about the size of a grain of rice, drop to the ground to burrow into the soil and find a root to attach to. These cicadas will stay underground, alone, in small chambers in the soil, drinking the fluid from tree roots for 13 or 17 more years. The emergence of each brood provides a huge feast for many animals, including birds, squirrels, rats, mice, fishes, raccoons, possums, cats, and dogs. When the cicadas come out, many of these animals will ignore their regular foods, 
and switch over to the new menu items, which are super abundant and easy to catch. Lots of other insects, such as wasps and ants, like eating cicadas too. But you gotta be careful because it's not good for your dog to eat too many. Humans like eating cicadas too. People around the world have always eaten a variety of insects as a good source of protein. Several different groups of Native Americans have traditionally eaten cicadas, both as a delicacy and a survival food. Not only did they eat them when they emerged in huge numbers, they also dug up nymphs from the soil in non-emergence years. Some chefs in restaurants in DC put cicada dishes on their menus as a special local treat. But I've heard that the best is chocolate-covered roasted cicadas. Periodical cicadas emerge in very large numbers to ensure that some of them survive to mate and reproduce, unlike other insects, which may be toxic or covered in hairs or have painful stings, cicadas have essentially no defense mechanism, except the male's loud call, which can startle potential predators. As we just saw, many animals like to eat cicadas, but because the insects emerge all at once in such large numbers, the predators can't possibly eat all of them, and the survivors can complete their life cycle. This strategy is called predator satiation. Cicada densities can range from 30,000 to 3.5 million cicadas per hectare. A hectare is 100 meters times 100 meters square, which is a little bit larger than a typical soccer field. Cicadas must also be really good at math, because how do they know to crawl up and out of the ground after exactly 13 or 17 years have passed? Well, we know part, but not all of the answer to that question. Because cicadas underground are tapped into the roots of trees, they can sense differences in the sap in the roots throughout the year, and can count the seasonal pulses of sap. They emerge after 13 or 17 cycles have passed. We don't know exactly how they keep track of how many years have passed. They probably use some type of molecular clock, but maybe one of you will become the entomologist who solves the mystery. There is an interesting experiment that helps scientists to figure out just what the cicadas were counting. One year, when a late frost killed the leaves on some of the trees, the trees had to produce a new flush of leaves. And scientists noticed that the cicadas feeding on those trees came out a year early. They had just counted an extra year. I don't know, seemed fast. Other scientists tested this hypothesis in a control experiment and got the same result. It's a good lesson in how much we can learn from keeping our eyes open to natural phenomena around us. Many dead cicadas will be eaten by scavenging animals like raccoons, rodents, ants, and beetles. Those that aren't eaten will be broken down by water and decomposers, including fungi and bacteria, returning lots of nutrients to the soil. These nutrients will support growing plants and baby cicadas feeding on their roots. And so the cycle of life continues. So now you know all about periodical cicadas. If you're lucky and a brood or two are coming into your town, go out, count how many you see, collect exoskeletons, enjoy their beautiful songs, and most importantly, be a friend to cicadas. Mm -hmm.